Chapter 20 Art, Science and Architecture of Ancient India Let's learn Literature, Art and Architecture, Science Literature A considerable part of our knowledge about ancient Indian history comes from literature. These literary creations were written in Sanskrit, Prakrit and Pali. The literature of this period can be categorized into religious and secular kinds. Infohai, Sama Veda is the original source of Indian classical music. Religious literature, the Vedas and associated texts. The Vedas are one of the oldest literary works that we have. The word Veda means knowledge. There are four Vedas, Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, Sam Veda, and Atharva Veda. They contain hymns in praise of different gods and goddesses. Along with the Vedas, there are a set of texts called the Brahmanas. They are commentaries on the Vedas. Each Veda has a separate Brahmana. There are also 108 Upanishads. The essence of Vedanta philosophy is in these Upanishads. Puranas are sacred literature dealing with stories of Vishnu, Shiva, Durga and about Earth's creation. There are 18 surviving Puranas. The Aranyakas are also an extension of the Vedas. The Buddhist and Jain texts also form a part of Indian literature. The Jataka tales are stories about the previous births of Lord Buddha. The Jain texts include the Purvas, the Angas and the Upangas. The Buddhist texts are written in Pali and Prakrit. The Epics Another genre of literary works were the epics. An epic is a long story written in verse form. Two great epics, the Mahabharata and the Ramayana, are very valuable because they continue to influence life even in the present times. They are an important source to know the condition of life and society in those days. They give vivid accounts of the extent of empires and the relations and battles among kingdoms. The Mahabharata also includes the Bhagavad Gita. It is in the form of a conversation between Lord Krishna and Arjuna on the battlefield. Brain Tickler, can you name some other great poets in Indian history? Secular Literature The Arthashastra by Kautilya Indica by Megasthenes, Harsh Charitra by Banvat, Stories from the Jatakas and the Panchatantra, The Works of Kalidas, The Accounts of Foreign Travelers and Sangam Literature are the important secular works of this period. Raj Tarangini by Kalhan is another famous historical work which describes the history of Kashmir till the 12th century. The Arth Shastra describes the political system of the time and the art of governance whereas the Indica tells us about the political, social and economic conditions during the Mauryan rule. Megasthenes has also described the city of Patliputra in great detail. Harsh Charitra contains a description of the early life of King Harshvardhana. Kalidasa lived during the reign of the Gupta kings and is considered one of the greatest poets and dramatists of India. He has written many poems and plays in Sanskrit. His famous works include Meghdut, Raghu Vamcha, Ritu Samhara, Abhijan Shakuntilam and Kumar Sambhava, which give a vivid account and insight into the life in the Gupta period. Foreign Travellers Many travellers and pilgrims came to India. Faxian, that is Fa Huen, came during the reign of Chandragupta II. He lived for six years, that is CE 405 to 411 in India, visiting Buddhist monasteries. His account gives a detailed description of the life of the people under the Gupta kings. Infohai, 
Megasthenes, that is 302 to 298 BCE, was an ambassador of Seleucus Nicator, who visited the court of Chandragupta Maurya. He wrote an interesting book, Indica, in which he gave a vivid account of Chandragupta Maurya's reign. Two centuries later, Zhuang Zhang, that is Wen Sang, came to India. He wrote about the conditions in those times. The ruler in the north was Harshvardhana. Yixing was another Chinese traveler who visited India. Secular Literature The Arthashastra by Kautilya Indica by Megasthenes Harsh Charitra by Banbhat Stories from the Jatakas and the Panchatantra The Works of Kalidas the accounts of foreign travellers and Sangam literature are the important secular works of this period. Raj Tarangini by Kalhan is another famous historical work which describes the history of Kashmir till the 12th century. The Arth Shastra describes the political system of the time and the art of governance whereas the Indica tells us about the political, social and economic conditions during the Mauryan rule. Megasthenes has also described the city of Patliputra in great detail. Harsh Charitra contains a description of the early life of King Harshvardhana. Kalidasa lived during the reign of the Gupta kings and is considered one of the greatest poets and dramatists of India. He has written many poems and plays in Sanskrit. His famous works include Meghdut, Raghu Vamcha, Ritu Samhara, Abhijan Shakuntilam and Kumar Sambhava which give a vivid account and insight into the life in the Gupta period. Foreign Travellers Many travellers and pilgrims came to India. Faxian, that is Fa Huen, came during the reign of Chandragupta II. He lived for six years, that is, CE 405 to 411 in India, visiting Buddhist monasteries. His account gives a detailed description of the life of the people under the Gupta kings. In Fuhai, Megasthenes, that is 302 to 298 BCE, was an ambassador of Seleucus Nicator, who visited the court of Chandragupta Maurya. He wrote an interesting book, Indica, in which he gave a vivid account of Chandragupta Maurya's reign. Two centuries later, Zuan Zhang, that is Wen Sang, came to India. He wrote about the conditions in those times. The ruler in the north was Harshvardhana. Yixing was another Chinese traveler who visited India. The Sangam texts, as explained in the earlier chapter, Sangam texts are a compilation of Tamil poems by Tamil poets and scholars between CE 100 and 250 at Madurai. Poet Elango Adigal, who was a Chera prince, wrote the famous epic Silla Pattikaram, the Anklant Bracelet. Later, Satanar of Madurai wrote its sequel, Manimekalai. Ratha Temple at Mahabalipuram was carved out of a single rock in the form of a chariot. Popular Literature Common people also told stories, sang and narrated poems, danced and performed plays. Jataka tales and Panchatantra are excellent examples of such popular literature. The Panchatantra is a book on how a person should carry on his routine life. It is about moral teachings and values, practical aspects of living and the good and the evil that reside in every human being. Art and Architecture Different art forms flourished in ancient India, painting, sculpture, architecture, jewellery, metalwork, woodwork and engineering. The paintings in the Ajanta and Ellora caves leave the visitors spellbound by their beauty and fineness. A large number of images and other inscriptions have been found which belonged to the ancient period. 
These are the living proof of the height that sculpture attained in those early times. Men and women were fond of jewellery from the very beginning. A number of pieces of jewellery have been excavated from even old Harappan sites. With the passage of time, Indian craftsmen had attained expertise in designing jewellery and it was in great demand in other countries. The iron pillar at Mehrali, Delhi is an evidence of the expertise in metal work in ancient India. This pillar has not rusted even after all these centuries. Intricate woodworks was in vogue in ancient times. People used to get their doors and windows carved in different patterns. Many tools and showpieces too were made from wood. The ancient Harappan sites of Mohenjo-daro and Harappa are examples of excellent engineering skills. The pillars, inscriptions and buildings tell tales of fine engineering methods. It is amazing how inscribed pillars were transported hundreds of miles away without causing any damage to them. Moreover, these pillars have retained their polish which was done hundreds of years ago. We find a number of monuments and buildings which prove that architecture was at its best in the ancient times. We find a number of temples, stupas, monasteries and other monuments belonging to the ancient period. The Buddhist temple at Gaya, the stupa at Sanchi, the Vishnu temple at Devgarh, the Lingaraj temple at Bhuvaneshwar, the Mahadeva temple at Khajuraho and many other temples in South India are the living proofs of the marvelous ancient architecture. Temples of North India The Vishnu temple at Devgarh, built during the Gupta period, is the finest example of temple architecture in North India. Other notable temples were built in Sanchi and Nachne. These were dedicated to Vishnu, Shiva and Durga. The deity was placed in the Sanctum Sanctorum, that is Garbh Griha. A tower, that is Shikhar, was added on top of the Garbh Griha to identify it as a sacred place. In some temples, a Mandapa also existed. Temples of South India The cave temples built by the Chalukyas of Ahol and Bandami in Karnataka are representative of classical South Indian temple architecture. The most famous of the structural temples built in the Pallava period was the Shron Temple at Mahabalipuram dedicated to Lord Shiva. The Rathas of Mahabalipuram of which the Dharmaraja Ratha is the largest were carved out of huge blocks of single rocks. The Cholas further refined temple architecture to an art, adding such distinctive features as the Vimana and Gopuram to the temple structures. Stupas Stupa means a mound having certain features. It essentially was an ancient burial mound revered by the local population. The Mauryan Emperor Ashoka built stupas in Buddha's honor all over India. Stupas had large domes having a central chamber in which relics of the Buddha were placed in a small casket, often exquisitely carved in crystal. The stupa had an umbrella of wood or stone and was surrounded by a wooden fence. This enclosed a path for ceremonial clockwise circumambulation, that is, pradakshina, a form of reverence paid to the relics. Stupas were mainly built between the reigns of the Mauryas and Guptas. Four stupas merit special mention. Bharat stupa was an important stupa built in Madhya Pradesh and was important for its sculpture. It does not exist today. Sanchi Stoop near Bhopal is one of the most prominent architectural remains of ancient India. Four torans, that is gateways, with carved designs were added to it in the end of 1st century CE. Amravati Stupa in the Krishna Valley was built in its completed form in 200 CE. 
larger than its sanchi counterpart its public walks are adorned with carved panels depicting the life of the buddha dhamik stupa at sarnath marks the spot in a deer park that is rishi patna where the buddha delivered his first sermon to his five disciples after attaining enlightenment rock cut structures temples and viharas were built from rocks in this period the most notable ones being the chatya built at karle and the cave temple of ellora paintings in ancient india painting was a highly evolved art form with palaces and houses of rich people having beautifully painted murals that is wall paintings on them vibrant colors were derived from plants and minerals to make these paintings the most famous living example of ancient painting is the ajanta cave complex having 27 caves containing the finest paintings of ancient india Some of the caves have esoteric images of the Buddha while some are painted with scenes from his life and the Jataka tales. Science, Mathematics and Astronomy. Aryabhatta and Varaha Mihira were outstanding mathematicians and astronomers. Aryabhatta wrote in the Aryabhatiya that it is the earth which moves round the sun and not the other way round. No one believed him then but now we know he was right. He also said that the earth rotates on its axis. The Brihat Samhita is an encyclopedia of science that is astronomy, astrology, horoscopes written by Varaha Mihira. They could precisely calculate astronomical movements and eclipses. Aryabhatta discovered the causes of eclipses. and also measured the circumference of the earth the concepts of the decimal system and zero were parts of the vedic mathematics propounded by aryabhatta he also formulated the numeral system comprising the digits 1 to 9 the positional value of digits was calculated the indian method of numeration was learnt by arab traders who passed it on to europeans This is the reason that the numerals are called Indo-Arabic system of numerals. Algebra owes its origin to Indians and Greeks. Geometry was used in making the sacrificial pot for yajnas. The acute, right, and obtuse angles were also known to be the Indians in ancient times. Infohai The ancient Indian system of medicine is known as Ayurveda which uses herbs and plants for curing different diseases. Medicines. Diagnosis of diseases and their treatment by the use of herbs is an ancient system in India. The Atharva Veda mentions many such herbs and diseases. Sushrut Charak and Dhanvantri were great exponents of the ayurvedic system of medicine of their times sushrut in his sushrut samhita has described the methods of cosmetic surgery operating cataract stone disease and some other diseases he has even mentioned 121 implements for surgery similarly the charak samhita written by charak is a compilation of names of indian medicines made from plants and herbs metallurgy and crafts the indian craftsmen were adept at mixing different metals and making fine pieces of jewelry images and tools indian jewelry made from gold silver and stone was famous all over the world india made considerable progress in manufacturing cotton woolen and silk garments also several types of colors and dyes were used for coloring these clothes needlework for doing embroidery too was in fashion a very high quality steel also known as wood steel was the pioneer high carbon steel alloy matrix developed in south india in the 6th century bce and exported globally it was known by many names as woods ukku ceric iron etc brent tekla What were the materials used to write manuscripts in ancient India? 
Recap The Vedas are the earliest literary works that we have. Two great epics in our history are Mahabharata and Ramayana. Different art forms flourished in ancient India. Painting, sculpture, architecture, jewellery, metalwork, woodwork and engineering. Ancient Indian architecture produced such structural wonders as temples, stupas, rock-cut structures, etc. Sushrut Samhita and Charak Samhita are important books in the history of Indian medicine. The Indian craftsmen were adept at mixing different metals and making fine pieces of jewellery, images and tools. Life Skills Mother, I have decided. I want to be a traveller. Oh, really? What does being a traveller mean? A traveller is someone who visits different places around the globe and writes about their culture, traditions, customs, etc. Okay, so you want to be a travel writer.